Hey there, today's video is all about the Matplotlib legend. So I'm really excited because I'm going to be sharing with you several different tips, such as how to put the legend outside of the figure, how to make a horizontal legend, and how to increase the font size. So let's get started. By the way, all the code I'll show you is available on my GitHub page. So we'll get started coding by importing pyplot as well as numpy, and then just creating a couple of arrays that we can plot. On this plot, we have two different lines, so let's go ahead and add a legend here. And the way that we add a legend to this figure is to reference the pyplot and that legend function. If we go ahead and run this code, we'll get this response, no handles with labels found to put in legend. And what this means is we don't have any text labels for these plots yet, so we need to go ahead and supply a list. I'll just call the first line blue and the second one orange. Once we do that, there we go. So now we have a legend for the blue and orange lines. Now, one tricky thing about this method, if I supply a list here, I have to remember which order I plotted each of those lines. The blue line comes first and then the orange, etc. Not so difficult at this point, but if I had more lines than this, I could definitely run into some issues. So there's a second way that you could create a legend, and I definitely prefer this way. That's through the label argument. So here's how it works. For both of these lines, I'm going to access the keyword argument called label, and I will directly label what should this line be called when I do make a legend later on. Now this has the big benefit of I don't need to remember what order I plotted things in. This will directly port over whenever I do include a legend. So I definitely recommend making a legend using this method with the label argument. Another common question when making matplotlib legends is can I reorder how the legend appears? And you can absolutely do that. The way that we'll do this is to extract the line object for each of these plots. So we've already labeled each of these lines, but there is an additional argument within the legend function called handles. So here I can pass in the order that I'd like those lines to appear. So let's say I want line two first and then line one. Now in my legend, I have orange on top followed by blue, and I can put those in whatever order I'd prefer by accessing handles. And one final thing to note here, if you are familiar with something like pandas or seaborn, these libraries may automatically create a legend for you based on either the column names of your data frames or the categories within those columns. When adding a legend to your matplotlib figures, the location of that legend is super important. Matplotlib will try to auto-detect the best location for your legend, but of course you can move it around if you'd like. Especially sometimes you might want to move the legend outside of the figure altogether. So let's see how you can do that. So a couple different things I want to show you with location. The first one is that there is this argument called loc within the legend function, and this can accept a string such as lower right. That means that you'd like to put the legend in the lower right hand corner. Here's another example. Let's put it in the upper center this time. And there we go. Legend has moved to the upper center. So you have nine different locations that you can access with a string like this. The default location is actually called best. And what best will do, it actually selects the location out of those nine possibilities that overlap with your lines the least. So if we change the line a little bit, that legend might move to a different corner because there it overlaps with the lines the least. Okay, so one question that gets asked a lot is how can I move that legend completely outside of the figure? And there are a couple different ways to do this, but I'll show you my favorite way. That's with this argument called bbox to anchor. And what we're gonna do here is actually pass in a tuple. When we're thinking about this tuple, you can think about your figure as ranging from zero to one on both the X and Y dimensions. So if I pass in 1.05 and one, that's gonna move the legend to the upper right corner. One final argument that I would highly recommend that you use if you're going to use this bbox to anchor approach is loc. And so here's what this does. Loc now represents which corner of your legend should be aligned in that bbox to anchor position. So in this case, I've passed in upper left that means the upper left corner of the legend will be in the spot 1.05, 1. If I change that to, let's say, lower left, now we'll see the bottom left corner is aligned in that position. So I really like this approach a lot because we can be very specific with where that legend goes. Let's try one more example here. Let's say we wanted to move the legend to the bottom left corner. 
What I would do now is pass in VBOX to anchor negative 0.05 and 0. That's going to move the legend completely outside the figure if my location that I'm talking about is the lower right corner of that legend. Another question that gets asked a lot is how can I make my legend horizontal? And for this, I'm going to recommend a argument called n call. So n call stands for number of columns. So right now we have two different lines that are in the legend. If I switch this to n call equals two, now I'm going to create two columns. So both the blue and orange lines will have their own column, which results in a horizontal legend. And just for completeness, let's say we had a third line. If I still had in call equals two, I'd end up with two columns. If I switch it to in call equals three, now each line gets its own column. And let's put it all together. If I want a horizontal legend that's outside of the figure on the bottom, what I could do is switch in call to be three, set my B box to anchor. Let's say we'll put that at 0.5 and negative 0.1, and then my location will be the upper center portion of the legend bounding box. There we go. And there are loads of different ways that you can style that legend, like changing the sizes or the colors. Let's check it out in the matplotlib python code. My first styling tip is how you can change the font size of your legend. This is pretty simple. Within the legend function, we just reference the font size keyword argument, and we can set that to be however many points we'd like. Here, let's try 14. That'll increase the font, and now we see the font increased on our figure. You can also access several other font properties, but you need to do it in a slightly different way. There is this other keyword argument called prop. This accepts a dictionary, and here we can pass in whatever font properties we like. So let's say we want to change this to be a bold font. That's weight is bold, size being 14, and we can even switch the font family to be something like serif. If you do want to switch the color of the text within your legends, that's a separate property. It's called label color, and this could accept just a single string if you want to switch both to the same color, or you can actually pass in a list here. So let's set the first label to be blue and the second to be orange to match our line colors. This next styling tip is a big favorite of mine. I pretty much do this for all of my matplotlib figures. There's a little tiny frame that goes around each legend, but I actually prefer to turn that off most of the time. So that's a property called frame on, and we just set that to be false. Then the border around that legend is removed. You can also title your legend if you'd like. This title keyword argument accepts a string, and then that string will show up as the title of your legend. And last but not least, sometimes people will ask, how can I change the background color of my legend? That's a property called face color, and this accepts any of those matplotlib colors. Let's try light gray for this example. So I hope you enjoyed learning all about the matplotlib legend. By the way, everything I showed you today assumes that you only have one plot. I'm considering making a whole separate video about legends for subplots. So if you're interested in that, or if you have any additional legend questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. Thanks so much, and I will see you in the next one.